Very good. Mm -hmm. So this is Dale. Dale's coming in for treatment of a lesion that's been in his lower back for a number of years. You can see here where it's raised, we put some anesthetic around this area, and there's a spot here that's communicating with the surface. It looked a bit oxidized before. You can see I put some pressure on it. It'll ooze just a little bit. And you want to be careful with that one spot, only because that's where the capsule comes up and meets the surface. So it'll be a little bit weak that's there. So what I'll do with this is, um, Dale, that doesn't hurt at all. No pain. No. So I'm just going to incise just, just below that, but along that same line. And I'm doing a horizontal incision because, again, we looked at Langer's lines in these areas. This is the plane on which we want to be incising along. I always tell the residents the lower back can be a little bit of a challenging area, only because um, the tissues can be so deep uh, that it seems like something's right at the surface and it can actually be quite deep. But the same thing applies here. As long as you just go slowly, you'll be fine with things. So when I like to use the curved Kelly's here for some blunt dissection. And you can see already that that's where the cyst is there. So it's starting to drain a little bit. So this is an uninfected field. So what will become critical with this is that we uh, make sure that we get the capsule out. And we should be able to get the capsule out because it's not infected. proper. So you can see below it, we're into the capsule, so if I put pressure on this, it's going to drain. This is all soft keratin. No pain there at all, Dale? Nothing at all. See, and I put pressure there. Bring it more of the keratin out. And so, when people have these, what they'll notice is when on a surface like that, when it oozes, the keratin will. It'll be a bit pungent, and that'll bother them because it just keeps happening again and again. And at least we, unless we get this fully out, it just continues to cause him problems. So you can see there. So this is just the soft keratin. But you can see there, that's that's the capsule that's there. And that's what we want to be taking out, is this material here. And that's the big difference with these. So if you can see, sometimes you see videos that are taken with this. And if they just get this stuff out, they just keep squeezing it. And that's all they do with it. And you don't go after the material that's there. And this is going to recur. Just dissecting that away from the wall. Just gently. I 
And this will just allow me to pull it away a little bit easier. So I'm just doing the same thing from the other side. And you can see as it's pulling away, because once you release it from the tissues a little bit, the sac wants to come out. appreciate that's all you can see that this, that's the open sack wall you can see that it's where it's torn off through here this is where the sack is complete on the other side so now you can see I've clamped it across the opening so back through here this is where the capsule is still intact See, it's open through here again a little bit. Just pull it out a bit. That's part capsule and part keratin. See that's separating now, that's where the capsule is separating out. Now we just want to make sure that it's all clear. So <clears throat> excuse me. When we're looking at the rest of this, <clears throat> and I don't think you tell you so much zooming in on that, you want to be looking for any leftover pearlescent sort of tissue. And you can see that that's all clear underneath. I open that up there's nothing that's there it's clear all the way around so that capsule is fully out now and now we can just suture that closed um, because this is this had some extra space to it and where it's at the debate to have whether you have dermal sutures or not um, I don't put any here only because we actually took mass out so this should close nicely without much tension behind it so the issue of dehiscence surely shouldn't exist in this particular case so we use 4 proline and then we'll suture that closed so this you could start from either side or even start from the middle if you wanted to because it's opposing so nicely. Um, this one I'll start from the middle. There's no right or wrong here. So I want to be a few millimeters off the edge. And so I'll be doing three loops. One, two, three. Lay that through. Just grabbing a tip. And pulling that across. And you should see that the suture lays nice and flat just like that. Perfect. And then one loop from the inside. So now I want to look and guesstimate how many sutures I'm going to put in. So about seven millimeters is where you want to be in terms of ideal distance. So I'd probably say you're going to do five in total here, just so it seals nice. You can even see there, even with just one in, it's sealing fairly nicely. So again, three loops, two, three. Pull through. 
And this is opposed to being a pilar cyst, this would have been a, an epidermal cyst. Um, the only difference being the tissue from which it's derived. And then the difference between a dilated pore whiner and um, a uh, epidermal cyst that's come to the surface, I guess it's dealing with the, where it's at in progression. Certainly dilated pores of whiner, they have more communication with the surface. And they oxidize more. So the debate as to where to put the dermal sutures, if I was dealing with a place that was under a lot of tension, so certainly a joint, or if we had um, left a large gap that was there, so you had a big um, you know, division across the margins of where you've uh, opened up the area, and certainly if there's going to be tension that's there, then I'd always put in dermal sutures because otherwise your risk of dehiscence certainly increases. Dehiscence is when this, when it opens up, when you take the sutures out, that it splays back open. And the other thing you'll notice too is when there's not much tension, you never get any dog earring that happens on the corners. That's another indication where you, if you had a lot of dog earring, you'd probably debate that you probably should have had some dermal sutures because the tension's too high. So these, the only way they really get infected is from a water source. So, so Dale, certainly make sure in the next, um, you know, why, before we take the sutures out to keep this dry. So as best you can, um, you know, either use a watertight bandage or don't get it wet in the shower and then once we get the sutures out then it's not a big an issue and then we'll just put a dressing on that and that looks good should be all done